A couple of weeks ago, a spark at Startup Mahakum lit up a national debate. Union Minister Piyush Goyal didn't hold back. He said Indian startups are too busy delivering groceries, not building deep tech or driving real innovation. All this against the backdrop of the US's sweeping new tariff regime. While its full impact is still unfolding, it's already forcing investors and companies to rethink where they build and back the next wave of innovation. So how are global players responding? We spoke to executives from the Indo-American Chamber of Commerce and a US-based investment firm that's doubling down on India. Let's find out in this episode of Point Break. We are focused on food delivery app, turning unemployed youth into cheap labor so the rich can get their meals without moving out of their house. Tired of the same old debate, grocery apps versus groundbreaking innovation? You're not alone. The startup world has split, those defending quick commerce and those pushing for long-term moonshots. But global investors, they're watching with confidence, not concern. At the expert dojo Indo-US Investors Conclave, founder Brian McMahon told AIM that India's deep tech gap, it'll close on its own thanks to the company's massive talent pool and appetite for real innovation. But that's just one side of the story. In an exclusive chat with Stephen Mathias, chairman of the Indo-American Chamber of Commerce, we unpack how the US tariff shakeup could reshape India's place in the global innovation race. We'll get to both of those in just a bit. But first, here's a quick roundup of what's been making waves in the world of tech. In the race to lead the AI revolution, India is positioning itself at the forefront. At the Carnegie India Global Tech Summit, Nanda Nilkani, co-founder of Infosys, shared a vision for AI-driven by public-private collaboration. He highlighted how India's digital infrastructure, like Aadhaar and UPI, can power AI-driven services and set a global standard. But as the technology evolves, Nilkani stressed the need for adaptive regulation one that nurtures innovation while ensuring safety. Public sector has structural concerns, it has ministries, it has departments, everybody is territorial, so data is not shared. And if data is the lifeblood of AI, we have to find a way to bring all AI together, irrespective of which part of the government it comes from. So actually, public sector is the most difficult India's DRDO has just flexed some serious sci-fi muscle. The Defence Research and Development Organisation, DRDO, has successfully showcased a 30 kilowatt directed energy laser weapon capable of targeting fixed-wing aircraft, incoming missiles and swarm drones. With this demo, India joins an elite club of nations, the US, China and Russia, who have proven this level of laser warfare capability. While we debate the lack of deep tech startups, Bangalore's deep tech is already going global. Bellatrix Aerospace has officially landed in the US with a new subsidiary in Delaware, its first physical presence in the American market. Leading the charge is Chris McDonald, a 17-year space and energy industry veteran, now appointed VP for the US Ops. He's already teased planned for a US-based manufacturing facility in the coming months. And why does this matter? This move positions India's homegrown propulsion tech at the heart of the booming US commercial space industry. Bellatrix has also signed an MOU with a major satellite manufacturer to become their preferred propulsion partner. If you saw 2020 as part of the COVID package, yeah. which was like the 20 lakh crore package that Nirmala Sitaraman announced, a part of that was also opening up a new sector for uh, increased employment and increased investments. Mm -hmm. Office space was uh, one of the sectors that the government actually opened. So after that happened, I think a lot more confidence came up with upcoming founders as well. Funding frenzy in the AI universe continues. It's not just OpenAI playing the valuation game anymore. While Sam Altman's company is reportedly worth $300 billion, its former execs are building billion-dollar empires of their own. Safe Super Intelligence, SSI, the venture from OpenAI co-founder Ilya Sutskiva has reportedly raised $2 billion in fresh funding, skyrocketing its valuation to $32 billion. Add to that the earlier $1 billion round and SSI is now among the world's most valuable AI startups. Meanwhile, 
former OpenAI CTO Mira Murati is eyeing a record-breaking $2 billion seed round for her new venture, Thinking Machines Lab. The company has doubled its initial fundraising target and is now chasing a $10 billion valuation. As the debate over India's startup future intensifies, US-based venture capital firm Expert Dojo is making a bold move, ramping up its commitment to India. As part of its $100 million global fund, the firm will invest $15 million exclusively in Indian startups by financial year 2026. The focus? 20 to 25 early stage startups across fintech, SaaS, B2B and AI. Investment checks will range from $50,000 to $1 million and it's not stopping there. Over the next two to three years, Expert Dojo plans to pour another $30 million into India's innovation ecosystem with its recently opened Bengaluru office serving as the hub for deal flow and founder support. There's no shortage of funding or startup energy, but lately, the global ships are steering the conversation in a new direction. How so, you ask? Let's break it down. I think 90 days is a very, uh, very short period to conclude uh, uh, an agreement. And in fact, the plan was to take longer to do that. Mm. Uh, so we'll have to see whether uh, it's actually achievable. Mm -hmm. um, but in some sense, I think because of the damage that those tariffs caused, uh, particularly in the US bond market in a very short period, mm. uh, I think the US will be a little more careful to reintroduce those tariffs at the end of 90 days. Mm -hmm. So that probably means that there'll be a strong interest, not just from the Indian side, but from the US side as well, mm -hmm. to conclude uh, a bilateral trade agreement. A larger percentage of um, of India's uh, exports to the US is actually in, in software and services. Um, and mm -hmm. largely that is not affected by this, uh, by what's going on here. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. um, I have uh, probed re repeatedly, you know, people in Washington, D.C., is there any talk of tariffs and services? Yeah. Uh, but there isn't. And uh, the U.S. doesn't really have a regulatory regime to, to implement that. And it's still possible that as of now, there's no talk of that. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a very good thing. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I'm in Bangalore and... You know, the industry is very software focused, so so that's that's a good thing. At the Expert Dojo Indo-US Investors Conclave, Stephen Mathias, chairman of the Indo-American Chamber of Commerce, told us the tariff-related issues, except in agriculture, are less of a concern. And the new tariffs might be a win-win for both India and the US. In an area like agriculture, it may be a, a lot more difficult because, you know, there are huge political sensitivities. Uh, given you know people in agriculture are fairly low income people in India. Yeah. Um, there are um, uh, uh, non tariff barriers that India has where you know we we have a lot of standards that we've set that require certifications. It leads to a lot of frustration by U.S. companies. The standards are not necessarily aligned with with international standards. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think India needs to actually yeah. remove some of those barriers, and I think it's actually good not just for U.S. exports to India, but uh, for the regulatory environment in India anyway. At the same event, we spoke to executives from U.S.-based VC firm Expert Dojo, which has committed $15 million to invest in Indian startups. Weighing in on the ongoing debate around India's deep tech focus, Expert Dojo offered an interesting perspective. I don't get it. Like, I've heard the conversation that more deep tech startups are needed in India, but I don't get it. I see Indian startups as some of the smartest and most educated and most AI understanding and friendly startups in the world. I do. Not all of them are based in India. Many of them are based in the US, but they're of Indian origin, are based in Europe, are based in other places. I don't see it as a problem. I see it as something that's being solved by the 25,000 graduates that are coming out of IIT every single year. This will solve itself. India is already becoming a powerhouse in AI. It will just improve. But while funds keep flowing and founders keep building, a key question looms. Are we chasing real value or just vanity metrics? Brian McMahon, founder of Expert Dojo, emphasized that chasing valuations turns founders into professional fundraisers. But it's transformative products that win. 
The VC firm has invested in over 300 startups across the globe, with over 30 in India alone. They see real value here from the depth of talent to the founder pedigree powering India's rise. One of the really hard things, one of the beautiful things with early stage startup is you have this incredible creativity, which is really the future of the next world. One of the terrible things with early stage founders is that most founders don't make it, they fail. And so the objective for many venture capitalists is to try and get as many founders as possible so that one or two will break through to incredible extents. Our objective is to be able to get as many incredible executors as possible so as many of our founders as possible can break through and have life transforming change for themselves and for their investors. There is no other place in the world like India to be able to do that. Indian founders have like the Jugaad techniques to optimize pretty much all the operations side of it as well. At the same time, the never giving up attitude is something that we are really kind of like focus on Indian founders. Like really, they're not giving up. Like they're like evolving their product all the time rather than pivoting all the time. So that's something that we think, I think Indian founders is doing an amazing thing. Swinging back to the deep tech debate, the reality India is already building. With over 3,000 deep tech startups and counting, the question now is, what more can be done to help them scale? There's a lot of startups in India already into deep tech. Mm -hmm. And uh, in, in, for example, there's a whole bunch of them in space tech, there's a whole bunch of them in semiconductors. There are, uh, there are at least 109 uh, deep tech startups doing quantum technology. So there's a lot happening in the deep tech environment. I think what's keeping our deep techs from succeeding is our lack of a VC ecosystem that supports uh, deep tech startups right from the day they start. In the US, for example, a deep tech startup can go to a VC and says, I've created this fantastic plan. I have this product that I want to make and I, I need money. I need $15 million. Even though they do not have any revenues or any customers, they still get the money. In India, VCs will not invest into early stage deep tech companies. And that is a huge problem. Now, to overcome that problem, uh, the government has already worked out a model which was announced in the budget, where the government talked about one lakh crore fund to be created to help in R&D into private sector and startups. This particular piece is going to go forward. While the conversation sparked by the government highlights the tension between fast growth and meaningful innovation, support is clearly ramping up. At the same event, Union Minister of Commerce and Industry Piyush Goyal announced a dedicated Startup India desk, a toll-free four-digit helpline in regional languages, and a new 10,000 crore fund of funds focused on early stage and deep tech ventures. But here's the real question for India's VCs. How ready are you to take a bet on deep tech? We are already the world's third largest startup ecosystem. Can we also become the launch pad for the next wave of global tech giants? That's all we have today for Point Break. I'll be back with more insights from the world of AI and tech. Take care and have a great night. And don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel because think AI, think AI.